Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. I am feeling good today. So today I am going to talk about how I get ideas for my art and how I develop my thought process for my artworks. Oh, if you are an artist like me, this is going to be very helpful. So please do watch till the end and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss an update. Uh, you can also uh, follow me on my Instagram, Polychromic. The link is in the description. Uh, you can see what kind of art I make and support. Okay, not awkward. So when I was in fine art college, I had no idea what to draw or paint. I would just randomly do things that everyone else was doing. I was having an art blog. I did not uh, have a particular art style or, you know, even do something that was worthwhile. <laughs> it was crappy <laughs> if I'm being harsh on myself. But... Then one thing that really changed how I think was during the third semester, we had an invigilator who came to our uh, submission, like we displayed all our work in the class and uh, an invigilator from outside came and they judged and uh, scored our artworks. So he took a look at the work I displayed in the class and he told me there is nothing. I don't see anything. And <laughs> I was stunned to hear that. I mean, I knew he was right. And from then on, I'm like, okay, I have to change. I have to change how I do art. And uh, I just kept thinking, how do I develop ideas? How do I get them? So one thing that really gave me a lot of uh, ideas was my dreams and uh, my dreams are very weird. It was weird, now it's not. <laughs> I'll tell you why. So I, when I was in college, I used to be very anxious about my future. Like what was I going to do after college? Will I be going to be okay? And I was having a lot of personal issues <laughs> like I was going through some kind of trauma and so it there was a lot of emotional and mental stress and what happens when I'm under a lot of emotional stress particularly my dreams get very weird they get very vivid and very uh, surreal surreal like it's extremely strange and I wouldn't say it's disturbing, it's very interesting, it's sort of like an adventure. So I uh, started to borrow a lot of elements from my dream and incorporated them into my art. And what happened, the more I kept drawing, the more uh, it helped me develop my thought process and uh, it brought me to where I am today in terms of my projects and my thinking. So um, sometimes I would draw and paint and I would just nap for a while and the minute I laid my head on the pillow, I closed my eyes, the image started coming. It was like an explosion of image in front of my eyes. So it was, it was kind of natural, like it would just come to me, the ideas would come to me, the images would come to me and I would try to capture them and I would just like roughly sketch them. And then later on I would look at them and try to develop a story or you know, make them into characters or a composition. So that's one way uh, I developed my thinking process, dream. Some of my dreams were very specific to what I was going through. So this is one of the dreams I had frequently. Uh, and this was a few years back, like in 2017-18. Uh, I was going through a lot of things and they were affecting my uh, mind like on a subconscious level. I had a lot of anger which manifested as snakes in my dream 
and i would often dream of snakes like hundreds of snakes attacking me and it was in my home it was very specific to a place i would also see some of the snakes were flying in the sky and i look up there were two huge cobras you cannot imagine how huge they were like they could block out the sun hey they were huge i would say they were about 50 feet long so yeah they were two huge cobra just floating in the air maybe they were it was like they were swimming so yeah snakes were one of my most common dream now i don't get them thank god i hate snakes and it was very personal because they represented my anger my guilt and my hatred towards some people it was a manifestation of these emotions so yeah we have here some of the most weirdest animals i ever saw in my dream they were like small fishes but with the head of a cow and fish tails and there was a shark a body of a shark planted on the ground it looked like a scarecrow and i think it had a mushroom top on it with these kind of teeth so <laughs> it was as though i took some drug and was experiencing a trip oh, i don't do drugs i'm just saying it was like that <laughs> not that i know what trips are i really don't but yeah this was a very interesting dream i had and i can't explain it it's just it just made me develop some stories that's it and i made this small composition of a tea cup in the shape of a face right and there are the cow fish brewing inside the tea cup and then it had the tea bag tag saying dreaming to not to stop it's like i'm brewing dream ideas when i'm sleeping and we have here another strange dream i had i'm going to explain them so the dream was about a college trip to an amusement park and you know in amusement park you have a lot of rides right one that looks like uh, it's okay i'm not going to explain them i'm quite bad at it but you've seen some rides at amusement park so what happened was one of the girl was sitting in a ride it had many cars cars attached to one point so it goes up and down and all of them rotate right so she was sitting on one of the car and it was going up and down while rotating and immediately an image popped up like it was exactly like this like she had six heads and each of them were healing from rotting or the head was rotting you can also see it that way it doesn't have to go from up to down it can also go from down to up so her being on the ride going up and down rotating gave a birth to this image you know the car the rotating car going up and down i can give you another example on how sleeping and dreaming influence my thinking process so this one time i took a break from drawing and i just slept i did not nap i wasn't falling asleep i just uh, laid my head on the pillow and i was thinking about this pillow i had when i was a kid it had two heads and like if you turn the pillow inside out two more heads would appear i think it was a doll of some sort one of the head was a girl with a scarf the one so then i took that character the image and i developed into a story i just thought about how i could make it into a composition and there you have it it's a girl with eight heads so that when you look from 
top it looks she looks like a flower and you know she's holding a flower and thinking there are so many petals attached to one body just like me and she's feeling relatable to it she's relating to the flower and she knows that she is special just like the flower she can identify with them because you know they both are somewhat similar they both have like many petals and heads attached to one body so yeah that's how i developed this drawing and then and then as the months went by the more i came back to this drawing and observed it i thought about how i could develop it further make a narrative composition of 2 3 two or more story lines and just thinking about it and then falling asleep on it it gave me an idea like an image of a long tiger like a snake you know a tiger snake popped into my mind and that tiger is just looking at this girl in the image so i thought let me just draw that too and that's how i develop this story this one so this is the tiger that came to my mind like the image just popped into my mind and it's looking at the girl in the picture that i had like the image that i had in mind the tiger was in the top left corner and the girl was here but then i wanted to make the composition very dynamic so i placed it this way with a little emphasis on the perspective like the first half body of the tiger is like coming towards you and in the back it's smaller so perspective is playing and you know the girl is giving out the flower to the tiger because it's orange and also the tiger is perched on this almond tree which during autumn season all the leaves will turn orange color so um when i saw the tree in real life during autumn season like the leaves were all orange color i thought like if a tiger sat on this tree you wouldn't know because they both have the same color the fur is orange the leaves are orange it would blend perfectly and that's why i put the tiger on the almond tree it's like a camouflage and then uh what happened was uh i began to sketch in the bus when i went to college like Uh, on my way to college i would travel in the bus right i would sit and sketch people i started doing that i would also try to sketch people from my memory it was a very good exercise which didn't last long unfortunately i stopped doing that i should start again but yeah um that's how i developed my love for drawing and painting people i would just look at people in the bus trying not to be creepy <laughs> and i would try to sketch them in my small uh, sketchbook it was a very fun thing to do because you know it makes you admire people uh, even though they are not considered as conventionally beautiful you just look at them you are trying to uh, capture their essence in your painting or sketchbook and it just makes you admire them so much you just begin to wonder what they are like what their personality is like what they are thinking and um yeah uh, i started my uh, like i developed my love for portraits that so this was also during college and uh, it was well appreciated by my teacher so it gave me a lot of motivation to continue that then um in the final year of the college i started to do more of a uh, work that had elements from my dream um, i'll show you one work later that will give you an idea of how i developed it 
so yeah in the final year of college i got more anxious i was like what am i going to do after college where will i get job how will i earn money it was <laughs> It was no wrecking <laughs> but uh, it turned out well i'm doing great it all worked out for me but yeah the more i got anxious the more i worried the more it helped my art <laughs> the irony so and you know the more i uh, slept the more strange my dreams became and that helped a lot <laughs> and you know the thing is now i am not so anxious or stressed and i have very peaceful dream i don't even remember them they like very normal dream so i am not uh, making artworks from them unfortunately but i'm glad i'm doing well mentally <laughs> so yeah dreams are one of my biggest inspiration and then uh, we have trail of thoughts i've just made a note here so some of the works like some of the works that i've made recently especially the tree or you can watch my previous videos i've uh, made a series of drawings about trees that looked like our body parts and when i was doing uh, when i was working on this project it really help me develop my thought process further and think about the big picture so what happened was uh, i go for a walk in the park in early morning and when i'm walking the there's a trail of thoughts like i look at trees i look at plants around me and i just a uh, think it's not like i'm thinking it just comes to me it's like breathing you know the thoughts are just flowing into my mind and i'm uh, like i'm like mm, okay i can do this tree this way this tree uh, it's like i'm connecting with nature and uh, it led to a trail of thought that eventually gave me an idea so for example i was going to a store the other day and uh, i saw this christmas tree so i was just looking at it and thinking okay so each branches have a single fern right a single leaf with thorns so what if you were to draw some people sitting on the branch a single branch so it looks like ferns it gives the illusion of fern and then i thought okay maybe we can do elves that elves you see during christmas or in the movie and so you see how like there's a trail of thought a chain of thought that leads to this idea and finally i thought maybe i can draw a christmas tree which is just full of elves there are no leaves only elves dressed in green uh, clothes and playing music that would be a very fun composition so that's one thing and uh, another example i can give you is uh i need to think for a minute yeah so i had this idea of drawing a version of hokusai the great wave uh, the famous painting of the ocean wave so i thought let me just draw it like a wave of bones like there is no water only bones the water is just fully covered with bones of fishes and other marine life so i wanted to draw it like that it was a good idea i was going to draw it like that but then uh, i took another look at hokusai's painting or the print and uh, there was this boat if you see the picture there is a boat in the work and i thought why don't i just replace that with an oil cargo ship like a modern day ship so then it would talk about the issues in modern day and then oil cargo ship oil oil spill so you can see where this is leading to and finally i thought let me just cover the water with oil spills and also the froth on the wave looks like bones in the original work by hokusai this 
all this cloth it looks like bones so i thought let me just draw those froth as bones and this oil spill so it was all coming together and you know it put well together it made a pretty good painting the thing is i failed to think about the impact i just wanted to show off my creativity and i just painted it i shouldn't have hurried into it but still it turned out pretty well i got a lot of good response of when i put it out on social media so people liked it but yeah i should really think about the impact i wanted to make i want to make with my work next time so yeah so there was a trail of thought that led to the idea it's not like the idea just suddenly came to me at once no it's a process it's a very slow process and usually it takes a very long time for me to develop an idea that's worthwhile so yeah the chain of thoughts and then i do activities that help stimulate my thinking process like sitting in a park or taking a walk in the park is one of the best thing for me to do that will help me come up with ideas think about what i want to do how i want to do and how i want to present it so yeah that was my brief about how i get ideas ideas come to me i don't come up with ideas <laughs> that video went viral but anyway thank you for watching thank you for subscribing to my channel and supporting artists like me we cannot exist without you <laughs> so have a good day in the next video i will talk about why i quit my full time job to become a full time artist so see you next time have a great day bye